and uh, yeah, hello and welcome to uh, all of you. It's very nice to see uh, many familiar faces, some familiar faces, but a little bit unfamiliar hair color. So Anya, I think you've uh, gotten a little bit more red since the last time I saw you. It's good. Yeah, I just re-dyed it yesterday. <laughs> okay, good. <clears throat> so uh, in any case, yeah, welcome to the uh, sixth session of the um, Discovering uh, Buddhism presented by the good folks at Gyo Gyatso. So some of you who just came in on time, uh, we were, uh, well, first we were joking a little bit about all the confusion about the, the session. So obviously it's not in person, but uh, uh, I am uh, yeah, going to be coming to the, the Bay Area. Uh, a month from now, and um, then we can hopefully uh, meet as many of you as uh, yeah who live on the uh, the West Coast. Um, and uh, yeah, that'll be that'll be nice, but not today, not yet. But in any case, since today is the starting of a, a new uh, module, then uh, as I have done in the past on the first day of a new module, we do a little bit more extensive uh, preliminary prayers. So let us do that again today. Ooh, Mary Ellen, if you can uh, enable screen sharing for me. Great. So here, hold on, yeah. Okay. Read mode. Wow. Okay. So these are the uh, extensive uh, teaching prayers. And here again, since these teachings have come down from uh, Shakyamuni Buddha, then uh, it's very good to uh, remember the kindness of the Buddha, the qualities of the Buddha, and uh, aspire to generate those qualities within our own mindset, our, our own mind stream. So we do that through uh, while we recite these prayers. <clears throat> the Guru, Teacher, Bhagavan, Tathagata, Arhat, perfect and complete Buddha, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct. Sugata, know of the world, supreme guide of beings to be subdued, teacher of gods and humans. To you, Buddha, Bhagavan, glorious conqueror, Shakyamuni, I prostrate, make offerings and go for refuge. And then the Guru, Teacher Bhagavan Tata Gata Arhat, perfectly completed Buddha, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct. Sugata, know of the world, supreme guide of beings to be subdued. Teacher of gods and humans, to you, Buddha Bhagavan, glorious conqueror, Shakyamuni, I prostrate, make offerings, and go for refuge. Guru, teacher Bhagavan Tata Gata Arhat, perfectly completed Buddha, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct. Sugata, know of the world, supreme guide of beings to be subdued. Teacher of gods and humans, to you, Buddha, Bhagavan, glorious conqueror, Shakyamuni, I prostrate, make offerings, and go for refuge. When supreme among humans, you were born on this earth, you paced out seven strides, then said, I'm supreme in this world. To you who are wise, then I prostrate. With pure bodies, form supremely pure, risen ocean like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, winner of the best, to, savior to you, I prostrate. With the supreme signs, face like a spotless moon, color like gold to you I prostrate. Dust free like you, the three worlds are not incomparably kind, wise one to you I prostrate. The savior having great compassion, the teacher having all understanding, the field of merit with qualities like a vast ocean, to you the one gone to lessness I prostrate. The purity that frees one from attachment, The virtue that frees one from the lower realms, the one path, the sublime, pure reality to the Dharma that pacifies, I prostrate. Those who are liberated and who also show the path to liberation, the holy field qualified with realizations, who are devoted to the moral precepts to you, the sublime community intending virtue, I prostrate. Do not commit any unwholesome actions, engage in perfect wholesome actions, subdue one's own mind, this is the teaching of the Buddha. 
a star, a defective view, a butterfly flame, an illusion, a dewdrop, a water bubble, a dream, a lightning, a cloud. See all causative phenomena like this. By these merits, may transmigratory beings attain the state of all seeing, subdue the enemy of faults, and be freed from the ocean of samsara, disturbed by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. So why don't we do the uh, Heart Sutra? Yeah, it's very good. So here again at the beginning of teachings, um, Actually, at the beginning of any activity, it's very good to recite the Heart Sutra. It uh, helps to dispel uh, obstacles. All right. So, oops. Okay, so we can do this uh, verse. The indescribable, inconceivable, and inexpressible perfection of wisdom, unproduced, unceasing, the nature of space. Object of the uniquely knowing transcendental wisdom to the mother of the Taurus ones of the three times I prostrate. Uh, and then some of you might know this, um, the multiplying mantra that you do before the recitation. Taya ta om dare dare ben dare soha. So we do that seven times. Taya ta om dare dare ben dare soha. 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 Taita om dari dari ben dari soha. Taita om dari dari ben dari soha. I prostrate to the noble, uh, three noble rare sublime ones. Thus did I hear at one time. The Bhagavan was dwelling on Master Vulture's mountain in Rajgriya, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of the Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Rilateshavara. How should any son of the Indian's train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that. And the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Rilateshavara said this to the Venerable Shariputra. Putra. Any son of a lineage or daughter of a lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form, emptiness is not other than form, form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, composition of factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra. Likewise, all phenomena are emptiness without characteristic unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no composition of factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomena. There is no eye element and so on, up to and including no mind element and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on up to and including <coughs> no aging and death and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there's no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There's no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration, without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly, completely awakened to the unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as truth, since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared, Tayata, Gate Gate, Paragate, Parasam Gate Bodhisattva. Shai Puja, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan rose from that concentration and commended the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avadakteshavara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the age, it is like that, it is like that. You should practice the profound perfection of wisdom just as you've indicated. Even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharidavati Putra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avadakteshavara, and those surrounding in their entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, asuras, and Gandavas, 
were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagavan. Uh, okay, so we can do this uh, extensive dispelling of hindrances according to the Heart Sutra. Uh, okay. I and all surrounding sinning beings take refuge in the Buddha, take refuge in the Dharma, take refuge in the Sangha. We prostrate to the great mother, Prajapadamita, surrounded by her children, the assemblies of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the Ten Directions. In dependence on my prostrations, all of you, may these words of truth be actualized. In the past, the Devi King Indra dispelled the evil madas by reflecting on the profound meaning of the wisdom going beyond and reciting the profound words in daily recitation. In the same way, in that same way, I also reflect on the profound meaning of the great mother Prajapadamita and recite the profound words in daily recitation. In dependence on that, may all diseases, spirit obsessions, bad conditions, opposing forces, that uh, which happened due to past karma and immediate conditions be dispelled, may they become non-existent, may they be pacified. Mm. Okay, prayer to the lion faced Akini. So, from the supreme, whole, uh, so holy supreme realm of Kichara, you who possess power of clairvoyance and magical emanation, look after practitioners like a mother looks after her children to the host of the Akinis of the three abodes I prostrate. Aka Samara, Sasadara, Samara Epe, Aka Samara By the teachings of a, a noble three rare sublime ones possessing the power of truth, may hindrances be averted, may they be eliminated, may they be pacified, may all enemies and negative forces opposed to the Dharma, Shintam Kuru Yesoha. May the host of 80,000 obstacles be pacified. May we be free from harmful conditions to Dharma. May all excellence be in accord with the Dharma. And may there be auspiciousness and perfect happiness here right now. Okay, so we've already done the mandala offering. And lastly, we'll just uh, take refuge as we normally do. I take refuge until I'm enlightened in the Buddha Dharma Supreme Assembly by my merits of listening to the Dharma may I become a Buddha to benefit transmigratory beings. I take refuge until I'm enlightened in the Buddha Dharma Supreme Assembly by my merits of listening to the Dharma may I become a Buddha to benefit transmigratory beings. I take refuge until I'm enlightened in the Buddha Dharma Supreme Assembly by my merits of listening to the Dharma may I become a Buddha to benefit transmigratory beings. Okay. All right. So let's see. Oops. Uh, let me do a slideshow. Okay, here we go. New module, new PowerPoint presentation. So uh, we did the preliminary prayers. So now um, uh, we always emphasize this, but at the beginning of everything we do, then uh, we need to set a very positive uh, motivation, right? So uh, these I've actually recycled from our very uh, first uh, time together. And um, we need to reflect on our current state and uh, you know why are we uh, doing all this work uh, participating in these discovering buddhism classes uh, doing all the required reading you know studying very hard meditating doing all this stuff well uh, it's because uh, as his holiness the Lama often mentions often emphasizes that uh, you know all beings uh, want to be 
happy and want to avoid suffering, right? Uh, but here, as Chandra Deva says, although wishing to be rid of misery, they run toward misery itself. Although wishing to have happiness like an enemy, they ignorantly destroy it. Uh, who is they? Uh, they is us, right? And even those who wish to obtain happiness and overcome suffering will wander with no aim if they do not comprehend the secret of the mind, the principle of dharma. So um, the fundamental starting point of Buddhism that His Holiness the Dalai Lama often uh, emphasizes is this fact that we as sentient beings uh, want to be happy, want to avoid suffering, yet, um, Though, though we don't want to suffer, we uh, are suffering nonetheless. And although we want happiness, we uh, ha haven't really uh, ever um, obtained the happiness that we so uh, desperately are, are searching for. And uh, why is this? Well, uh, then, uh, you know, the, the fundamental um, sort of root of all of our suffering is based in our minds, right? And particularly uh, based on uh, ignorance, right? Uh, unknowing right so uh, here um, we talked about uh, this secret of the mind right so this can be then uh, discussed on two levels right there's the conventional level of truth as well as the ultimate level of truth the conventional level of truth is that uh, our happiness and suffering come from the respective causes of virtue and non-virtue right hmm? That's what this module is going to be all about, okay? And then the uh, more ultimate uh, level of truth is that the, the mind and all phenomena uh, lack even an atom of inherent existence, yet the, the ignorant mind, which grasps onto, believes and holds that uh, inherent existence uh, is real and is true, uh, that actually is the, the root of uh, samsara. And because we are under the... Um, the influence of, of that, then we endlessly uh, have in the past uh, taken rebirth within samsara, and until we are able to uh, cultivate the direct antidote to that ignorant mind, which is the wisdom that realizes its opposite, right? The wisdom that realizes emptiness, then in the future, our samsara will also be uh, endless if we're not able to cultivate the antidote. Okay? That's why, right? Wandering with no aim. Okay, so now, uh, then, uh, here at the beginning, then I also mentioned this uh, uh, two verses from the Dhammapada, where we, uh, the Buddha said, the phenomena are created by the mind, the mind is principle, it comes before action. If one carries a good heart, then have, and then speaks, happiness follows like a shadow follows the body. Phenomena are created by the mind, the mind is principle, it comes before actions. If a person speaks with a bad motivation, afterward, suffering arises for that person like a cart follows an ox, right? So, um, yes, even now at the beginning of uh, any activity we do, but especially at the beginning of, you know, taking uh, Dharma teachings or, or doing any kind of Dharma activity, we have to make sure that our motivation is as virtuous as possible. And so um, of all the... Um, various types of motivation we can have, then, um, <laughs> well, in, we, in our um, previous discussion of the so-called three scopes, the three uh, right, types of beings, the three, three types of practitioner, we divided those three types of being uh, by their particular motivations that they have when they undertake uh, some kind of virtuous activity, right? So we had the small scope practitioner, middle school practitioner and the great school practitioner. This is a review for everyone. Yes? Okay. So the small school practitioner, their primary motivation is, thank you, yes, to get a good rebirth in the next life. Middle school practitioner's primary motivation is to gain liberation from samsara for uh, themselves alone. And then the great school practitioner, their motivation is to uh, attain full enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings. Okay, so as um, eh, as the, the, the Buddha, or sorry, as Lama Tsongkhapa himself said, you know, 
that um, it's not merely enough that the teaching uh, be a Mahayana teaching, but our motivation has to be a motiv uh, Mahayana motivation, right? So now as we start this new uh, module, then we should, uh, as much as possible, try to cultivate this mind of uh, bodhicitta, thinking that you know the very purpose of my life is to benefit all sentient beings. And in order that I may be able to benefit sentient beings in the best way, most effective way, most skillful way, I myself must first uh, achieve the state of highest perfection, that of complete enlightenment. Then and only then will I have all the skills and qualities to lead and guide sentient beings from the oceans of samsaric suffering to the state of liberation and enlightenment. And in order to do that, then I need to learn about all the various uh, practices that lead to enlightenment. And these practices are laid out uh, very beautifully in the uh, Lime Rim teachings. And therefore, I'm now going to take these teachings on, on the Lime Rim, particularly uh, this, this module uh, all about karma, uh, so that I can quickly attain the state of enlightenment so I can be of utmost benefit for all sentient beings. Okay, got that? Okay, good. So if you lose it, it's okay. Then, you know, find it again, <laughs> cultivate it again, again and again and again, uh, as many times as you need, okay? So um, yeah, it's not just something we do at the beginning of, of a of a teaching and then kind of forget about it until next week, but as much as we can, even throughout the day, even throughout the session, and then we should cultivate uh, again and again. Okay. So let us uh, go back to the big picture. Okay. Discovering Buddhism. We uh, now are in module six. Okay. We have these 14 modules. Uh, we started off so many eons ago <laughs> with mind and its potential. Uh, I did that guy with you. And then uh, Lexo took you through uh, how to meditate. And then uh, I took you through presenting the path. And then uh, we have kind of skipped for now the fourth module, the spiritual teacher. Uh, but we'll get back to that. Okay. And then Lexo just took you through the uh, fifth module death and rebirth. And now we are on the sixth module, all about karma. All right. And then uh, the rest of these, yeah, they're coming later. Um, so actually, probably better than this is the good folks at FPMT made this um, Hold on, oops, hold on a second. Okay. Okay. So you should all have this. It is the, um, the components of the various modules for students. Okay, this is familiar. Have you opened it this week? Okay, no problem. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Okay, so then, you know, at the beginning, right? This is like the first first day of the the new semester, right? So you're you're coming into class. Then you know you get the syllabus from the the, the teacher, and automatically we're we're trying to get an overview of all the topics that are going to be covered. What is the kind of you know requirements so that we can then plan our uh, semester or maybe we're in the quarter system here, right? So <laughs> the next uh, you know few weeks we can get a, a, a broad overview, kind of know what the requirements are, so that you know there's no surprises later. Okay. So this description, okay. Learn the essential facts. How about the law of cause and effect in relation to actions and their results? Generate a clear understanding about how karma works. Discover effective tools to accumulate merit, the cause of happiness and success, and purify mistakes, uh, mistaken actions done in the past, explore ways to become adept at dealing with life more effectively and thereby take control of our future. Okay, yeah, sounds good. So we're gonna cover in this module, these topics. We have the four principles of karma, 10 non-virtues non and their results, four parts of a karmic deed, 
practice of rejoicing and points of motivation, four point powers in the relation to the four kinds of karmic results, six methods for purification, how to make every action meaningful, the importance of accumulation of merit and purification. Merit is the source of all happiness, success, and realizations, and the importance of practicing patience since anger destroys all merit. So now, for those of you who have studied a bit about uh, karma before, uh, and well, Lamrim in general, in particular about karma, then probably you have uh, some idea about every, every one of these bullet points. Hmm? Yeah? Okay. Then automatically it's a little bit like, oh, you can see what one might be a bit shaky, right? Oh, four kinds of karmic results. What are those again? Okay. So we're going to get into all that. But just now, take it as a kind of, um, you know, take inventory of, remember, our three kinds of pots, the, the upside down pot, the leaky pot, and the dirty pot. So maybe, maybe some of this, the, our karma pot sprung a little bit of a leak. We got to kind of review this. We're going to get there. But now it's at least important to, to know the, the big picture, okay? So this actually, um, I don't think you have this suggested time in the module in yours, but this is this is the the, the teacher's one, right? So we're gonna have yeah uh, four to five classes, two meditations we're gonna do, and then a two day retreat at the end. Okay, so let's see what other kinds of practices we're gonna do. We have these two meditations, right? Meditation on rejoicing, meditation on this denial of anger. Then these other integration practices, the Vajra Self practice with four opponent powers, frustrations of the five confession Buddhas with the four opponent powers, and the retreat, two day Vajra Self retreat with the frustrations for the confession Buddhas. Okay, good. Suggested uh, integration practices. So, yeah, meditation on one's current habits of mind, and then the other integration practices, Numne, eight Mahayana precepts, Vajra Self preliminary practice, and then we have all these required readings. <clears throat> so, uh, one thing that's important to note, I looked at this, uh, so this healing anger, oops, here, see, healing anger, power of patience from Buddhist perspective, so um, that was the old name for the book, it is now, um, you know, republished in a new edition by the good folks at Wisdom Publications, and uh, it is now called Perfecting Patience, okay? So uh, I did uh, look, there's a few uh, online used bookstores that have it under this old title, Healing Anger, uh, but the, the new version uh, is Perfecting Patience, okay? So actually that is a uh, commentary on the patience chapter of the Bodhisattva Charyavatara by His Holiness the Dalai Lama. So uh, readings included in the DB materials, you all have that in your packets. And then I think most of you have um, uh, purchased this liberation in the palm of your hand. You have this. So that is nothing new. Uh, but this one, The Healing Anger, or alternatively, you can get this book by uh, Tipton Children. Okay. And then um, the uh, other suggested readings. So, yeah, these ones by FPMT, they're all actually available for uh, free download, including this uh, teaching from the Vajrasattva retreat. It's a, uh, you know, clocking in at, uh, I think around 700 pages. So, um, you know, in, in your free time. And then uh, there are these not included in the DB materials. They're just suggested. So, uh, you know, maybe if you have access I think uh, the the centers your your local center would have this one especially becoming Vajra Sapa, uh, and it might even have this one spiritual friends. And then there's a few videos. Hmm. Uh, available in VHS format. Uh, I don't know who does that anymore, but uh, yeah, they're there. Okay. So, good. We have all that, okay? So um, if you, I think all of you have that that list, right? So, you know, go through that. And, uh, you know, as you're doing the readings, 
then always go back to that initial uh, topics, right? Which is what I've, I've done here, right? Uh, right, so this and uh, these topics covered, you know, make sure uh, you have something to, to say about all of those. Make sure you understand those points very well. Uh, because, you know, in, <laughs> when I think about my job, right, uh, teaching this module, then, you know, I'm given this list and I'm like, okay, these are the ones I have to copy, uh, I have to uh, cover. And then, so you from the student side should also think that, oh, these are the ones I have to learn. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. So now I wanted to, uh, you know, bring it back into the, the overall context of the Lamarin. Okay. So we covered this in module three, uh, the kind of root outlines of the liberation of the palm of your hand. Um, and just to sort of set the context and where does this module about karma fit into the overall um, lime room, then uh, we saw uh, these four root outlines. I mentioned they're, they're the root outlines uh, of the liberation of the palm of your hand, but uh, they're actually also the root outlines of lime room chenmo. Uh, in fact, most, uh, I don't wanna say all, but most of the other uh, Lamarim texts, the texts of this genre that follow Lama Sankaba, they follow these root outlines. Further, when you go down the, the tree of outlines, hmm, uh, and maybe, you know, subliminally, that's, that's why I have this tree behind, right? <laughs> then, then you see further down the branches, then there will be uh, some more variation, but the, the root outlines are the same. So remember, we had the greatness of the authors given to show the teaching has an immaculate source. The greatness of the Dharma given to increase one's in respect for the instruction, then how to teach and listen to the Dharma that has these two greatnesses, and then the sequence in which the disciples are to be taught the actual instructions. Okay, so then uh, uh, we're in this stage, right? The sequence in which the disciples are to be taught the actual instructions. Then we have, you know, uh, number one, the root of the path, devotion to a spiritual guide, that's going to form the, the basis of uh, uh, module four, which is coming later. And then we have uh, two, the proper training, uh, graduated training you should undertake after you have begun to rely on your spiritual guide. Then that has two, right? The stimulus to take the essence of your optimal, uh, optimum human rebirth, and then how to ex extract essence from your optimum human rebirth. That has three points. Training your mind in the stages of the path shared with the small scope, shared with the medium scope, and training the mind in the great scope stages of the path. Okay. All right. So, uh, by the way, all you know, you know, I emphasized this whole you know shared with a small scope, right? So, um, I think most of you. We're on this course when we did it. I do see a few new faces, but uh, anyway, we can maybe go through that some other time. Uh, so now, um, training the mind in the stages of the path shared with the small scope. We had developing a yearning for good rebirth, and that was recalling that your present rebirth will not last long and that you will die. Okay, so that was. The, um, the outline where the last um, module that Venerable Lexok went over with you, uh, death and impermanence, right? And then uh, in the traditional Lam Rim, this next uh, thinking about what sort of happiness or suffering you will have in your next rebirth in, uh, in either of the two types of migration, that is all of the um, further explanations and teachings on the suffering of the, the lower realms, right? So you have the, the very um, vivid uh, explanations and descriptions of the uh, hell realms, uh, the Prater realms and animal realms, it goes through all that. So uh, here in the, the DB course, uh, they've sort of fast forwarded through that chapter. Mm -hmm. And then uh, here, 
then next, right, the teaching the means for happiness in your next rebirth, this has two subpoints. And uh, interestingly, right, in the traditional presentation of Lamrim, it's first taking refuge, the holy gateway of ent for entering the teachings, and then it's the teachings on the karma. But uh, as you uh, notice, in DB, they have uh, switched the order of these two. So first, we're going to go into uh, uh, karma, the law of cause and effect, and then uh, refuge comes after that. Okay. All right. So then, this is interesting, right? The root of all health and happiness. Okay. You see, developing believing faith in the law of cause and effect. The root, right? So the root is like the most important. Mm -hmm. And so we've seen, uh, you know, the this, you know, the root, right? The root is like the most important one. Uh, actually. Mm, that's uh, referring to different things in different contexts, right? In some contexts, you know, we have like the foundation of all good qualities is, you know, the, the uh, kind and venerable um, uh, guru, correct devotion to the guru is the root of the path, right? By clearly seeing this and applying great effort, please bless me to rely upon the guru with great respect, right? Where is that from? Foundation of all good qualities, which all of you have memorized. Great. Okay, so there we see the, you know, correctly devoting to the virtuous friend is the root of the path, right? Yes? Here we have the, the belief in karma um, is uh, the root of all health and happiness, okay? And then, you know, later, um, well, when we talk about the, the Mahayana path, uh, the root of that, or sometimes they say the doorway to the Mahayana is uh, bodhicitta. And then they also talk about the, the root, uh, the root of samsara being this ignorant mind grasping to true existence. And therefore, the, the uh, wisdom realizing emptiness is the one that's able to, to sever that. So depending on the context, you know, it's kind of like um, a little bit uh, advertising, right? So all of these different sections and topics of Lamrim, they're all like saying, oh, this one is like the, the most important. Um, and then, of course, uh, there's the great uh, Tibetan uh, yogis who, who said that, you know, um, the uh, actually the, the Buddha in the Dhammapada said that, uh, you know, just like of all the footprints, the, the footprint of the elephant is the supreme. Uh, similarly, of all the various meditations, the meditation on death and impermanence is the supreme one. Right. So now. Uh, here again, remember, when we talked about the greatness of the Lam Rim to realize that all the Buddha's teachings are free of contradiction. Hmm? So we have to use our, our thinking, right? We have to use our analysis and say, okay, well, uh, you know, at one point the Buddha's <laughs> emphasizing this, the other time the Buddha's emphasizing that. What's going on? Is the Buddha just, you know, uh, contradicting himself? And of course, we have to say, no, no way. Uh, but rather, in each of these contexts, we need to see from what perspective, right, uh, these statements are being made, why it is so important, okay? So then when you see a statement like this, oh, the uh, developing believing faith in the law and cause and effect is the root of all health and happiness, okay? Then what is being meant? So here uh, we have these clues uh, from Shantideva and the Bodhisattva Charavatara, right? So, from non-virtue comes suffering. How can I truly be free of this? It is fitting that at all times, day and night, I think only of this. Wow. You know? For the sage has said that conviction is the root of all virtues. And to constantly meditate on frictional effects is the root of this conviction. Okay, so, okay, now we're getting some clues. So Shantideva also, you know, it's not just, um, uh, you know, Lamson Kappa in these Lamrim outlines talking about uh, karma being so important as being a, a, a root, but uh, here also in the uh, authentic Indian commentaries, we see Shantideva also saying that it is, uh, you know, the root and here, Shantideva is saying, furthermore, you know, the sage, the sage, 
uh, means the Buddha. The Buddha has said this too. Okay, so now we get a more um, kind of the, the 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 textual evidence, right? Uh, is you know we have the Buddha, Shantideva, and Sankhaba saying this. Okay, so um, why? Why is this, you know, um, our karma uh, so important, right? This could be a good, good uh, discussion question, maybe a good, uh, uh, you know, one to two page essay, something to think about. Hmm? Uh, anyone want to venture a guess? Or uh, it's not, not a guess, don't, don't venture a guess, I'm sorry, that's, a, that's the wrong word. Um, want to share a thoughtful hypothesis based on analysis and your knowledge of the Dharma. Okay, let me, I only see six people, oops. So hold on, I'm gonna, op I'm gonna make my screen bigger where I see you guys. Hmm. I'm not seeing, okay, if, if you want to volunteer, you can just unmute yourself and, and say, I'm having problems to uh, see all of you at once. <laughs> or are you guys being shy? I think if you take off screen share, then you'll get to see the whole thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I did just open up my screen, but yeah. I saw Mary Ellen on mute. I'm like, she's gonna give the the home run answer, but she's just giving me technical support. No, I, I'm just joking. This is good. I need all the support I can get. No, no one can even venture something. Okay, so It's okay to be, you know, to be partially correct. You don't have to be shy. <sighs> okay. I'll give it a whirl. Okay, Marianne, yes. <laughs> it's the root because karma is intentional action and it is the intentional action that creates, that your mind you, creates the world out of. You create your circumstances through the that intentional action and if you don't pay attention to it then you just follow habit and and things don't get better okay that is that is true i, I agree with everything you've said okay but you know sometimes i like to have this as a you know just something to 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 kick around you know like if you were able to choose one of the realizations, right, to have in all these Lamarim topics, right, you know, like, I don't know, you spin the wheel, right, or whatever, right, and you could choose one, right, which would you choose? Would you choose the, the realization of, you know, a uh, common uh, effect? No, I would choose the realization of emptiness so that I could eliminate um all of the delusions by right things as they really are right yeah. so you know then we have shantideva saying okay, okay and that, that's true too right remember uh, as as lama sangaba says in three principal aspects of the path it's just, it's just one example right uh, you know even if you have developed uh, renunciation right the wish to be free from samsara and bodhicitta if you do not realize you know the the uh, then you're not able to cut the root of samsara, right? Therefore, make effort at realizing dependent arising, right? So there, you know, uh, Sankhapa is talking about the importance of of realizing emptiness. But understanding karma opens your heart to the suffering of all sentient beings, and you need emptiness, but you need compassion as well. Yes, that's also true. 
Uh, James. Can, can you put the writing back up? Because um, there was a thing about belief in there. The... Mm. Yes. Oops. Excuse me. Uh, Is this it? No. Oh, no. Here we go. It was so. Um, Before? It was no, yeah. that was it. So conviction is the root. So because if you have conviction, then it'll lead you to learn all the other things because you believe. So then, I mean, is that that's the way I was interpreting this. So I didn't I, I just thought of like if you believe and you have conviction um, that this the Dharma is real, then won't that lead you to do everything else? Yeah, uh, you know, this is this is a kind of open ended um, question to, to, to think about again and again. But, uh, you know, uh, for sure. Um, yeah, if you if you truly had, uh, you know, conviction that from non virtue came suffering and from virtue uh, came happiness, then. I think our actions would be very different from how they are. Even even now that we say those things, even now we say I believe in karma, you know, mm -hmm. it's a, it's it's really <laughs> not really sunk in. Um, because I I yeah I think I don't know at least at least for me, you know, it's very we can be very loose, you know, and it's even like uh yeah. Yes, karma, but <laughs> this kind of thing. But this, but that. We make excuses, and then you know, uh, the the ethical discipline can be a bit loose. Anyway, um, yeah. So some things to think about. I'll just um, thank you for your participation, uh, those who participated. I'll just say one other thing, right? And I'll bring up these these next quotations, right? So a few things. So here, Chandrakirti in Southern and the Middle Way says for ordinary beings, so ordinary beings, we know that's uh, beings who don't have a direct realization of emptiness. Okay. Those born from the Buddha's speech, that's another word for uh, shravakas, right? And then uh, those whose nature are certain as self-enlightened, okay, those are the Prateka Buddhas. Okay, self-enlightened, or conqueror's children, those are the bodhisattvas. There are no causes of certain goodness or high status apart from ethical discipline. Okay. Then, uh, Nagarjuna in the Ratnavali Precious Garland said, initially there are the teachings on high status, then come the teachings on certain goodness. For having obtained high status, you gradually reach certain goodness. So I think I brought this um, the second quotation up in the earlier uh, module, right? So we know high status is rebirth as a uh, you know a human or deva, and then certain goodness is the attainment of liberation or enlightenment, right? So remember when we think about the the lamb rim, right? Actually. So we we're talking about the, you know, the, the stages shared with the small scope, stages shared with medium scope, stages sh shared, oh, sorry, and the great scope stages, right? So all of those, even those wanting, uh, you know, to think of themselves as great scope practitioners, bodhisattvas, right? They still have to pass through the, you know, initial uh, stages of practice. And the, the, the main sort of practice of the small scope practitioner is just this taking care of karma, abandoning negative karma and and accumulating a uh, virtue, right? That's that's the, the main practice. So then, when we when we look at we look at it from different perspectives, then you know even for the attainment of um, for the attainment of um, liberation, right? The the principal training is the three higher trainings, right? The first one being ethical discipline. Then concentration, then wisdom, right? So uh, 
that's another one, right? So ethical discipline is like the, the, the root of that. Uh, but here, then even in the, the, the Bodhisattva, right? We know that in the teachings on precious human rebirth, that in order to make our most progress along the path to enlightenment, we need this fully qualified uh, precious human rebirth, you know, with the, the 18 qualities. And then there's the eight fruitional effects and all these things, right? So for that, especially even, uh, you know, that we say, oh, I want to, you know, follow the Bodhisattva path. Well, uh, sorry to say, we're probably 99.999% uh, not going to be enlightened in this life, right? But we want to then have a succession of good uh, human rebirths or, or rebirth in a pure land, definitely to, to, to take a, uh, you know, not be born in the lower realms in our next life. And therefore, uh, we need to take care of our karma. So here you see, for having obtained high status, you gradually reach certain goodness, right? Which, uh, you know, uh, Nagarjuna says here, then, you know, we'll need a succession of higher rebirths. In each of those rebirths, we need to then continue to meet the Dharma again and again, meet with, you know, the, the guru, meet with the Dharma, practice well, have all the, you know, conditions, outer and inner conditions to make progress along the path, and then gradually we'll reach the, the stages of, um, uh, you know, uh, liberation and enlightenment. But all of those, right, are going to require then uh, accumulating, uh, you know, virtue, as we were saying. Actually, this is in one of the uh, the bullet points of this module that you know that that good karma is the cause of all kinds of happiness and success. So even you know success in uh, you know our practice, uh, why we spend so much time uh, in the monasteries or in the centers as well, you know, doing these these pujas. Why Lama Sankhaba spent all that time doing the preliminary practices to purify, uh, you know. Um, Doing the the 3.5 million prostrations, offering the all the mandala, right? Is is so you know the 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 karma, the karmic mix um, could be a change. Hmm? So anyway, that's what I want to say about that. But yeah, it definitely is worth thinking about more. Okay, all right. So. Then, right, we had this, uh, hold on, right, this one, uh, developing believing faith, the last bullet point, developing believing faith in the law of cause and effect, uh, this, what is it, the root of all health and happiness, oops, <laughs> hold on, <laughs> I've lost you, uh, okay, I can't see you anymore, hold on a second. Okay, there you are, there you are. You know, I also have a new computer, which I'm still getting to know better. So hold on. Okay. Uh, I've lost you again. Okay, I can't see any of your faces, which, I'll, but I'll just trust that, you know, you are still engaged. I like to see your faces. Because then I can see if people are like, you know, like, oh, what is this guy talking about? You know, but I'm just going to have faith. I'm going to have believing faith in all of you. Okay. So here we now have uh, these outlines broken out. This one, uh, developing believing faith in the law of cause and effect, the root of all health and happiness. That has three sub outlines. Thinking about cause and effect in general, thinking about some of the specifics. And after thinking about these things, the way to modify your behavior. Okay. So the first outline then is uh, broken into four points, right? Uh, how karma is fixed, how, uh, sorry, karma shows great increase. One does not meet with something if one has not created the karma for it to happen. And karma, once created, will not disappear of its own accord. So, I will uh, now for the rest of this class, right? We have about half an hour. Uh, and I'm going to talk about this. Then I'm going to open up for more questions.
right? And then we can go to, yeah, seven o'clock uh, Hawaii Standard Time, nine o'clock Pacific uh, Standard Time. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so now, uh, the first point, how karma is fixed. So this is a quotation from Laman Chenmo. All happiness in the sense of feelings of ease, whether of ordinary, oh, this should be or, or noble beings, oops, including even the slight pleasures, such as the arising of a cool breeze for being born in a hell, arises from previously accumulated virtuous karma. It is impossible for happiness to arise from non-virtuous karma. All sufferings in the sense of painful feelings, including even the slightest suffering that are occurring in an arhat's mind stream, arise from previously accumulated non-virtuous karma. It is impossible to arise from virtuous karma. And then uh, Lama Sakaba uh, cites as his support from the Indian sources from on from non-virtues come all sufferings likewise all miserable realms from virtue come all happy realms and joy in all rebirths okay so uh this basically is the um the the point karma is fixed or in in other contexts you'll see karma is certain that just means that you know from non-virtue comes suffering from uh, virtue comes uh, happiness, okay? Now, um, I think I talked about it um, before, but it is also good to just review, okay? So we know an arhat, arhat, we know what that means. Some, well, so here in this context, Okay, the arhat means someone who has attained liberation from samsara. Okay, then uh, you know the question comes up. Well, so that arhat is liberated from samsara. Uh, then uh, it says here, including even the slight slightest suffering occurring in an arhat's mind stream. So then, uh, does an arhat uh, have suffering in their mind stream? I'm going to now look at your faces. An arhat has suffering in their mind stream. Maybe when they think about everyone else's suffering. Okay, that's that's that, that's good. Yeah, uh-huh. But then the question becomes, well, wait a minute. Even that that suffering um, coming from thinking about other suffering, right? Well, it is said here that um, hold on, let's, let me go back to that quotation. I think your microphone unplugged. Oh yes, it did. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So you see, all the sufferings in the sense of painful feelings, including even the sight suffering occurring in Arhat's mind stream, arise from previously accumulated non-virtuous karma. Right. So now, if we're saying, oh, you know, when the the Arhat is um, is meditating, you know, on the suffering of other beings, and therefore they suffer, well, here in the in the quotation, it's saying that that arises from you know, previously accumulated non-virtuous karma, but that meditation on, you know, compassion is actually a virtuous state of mind, right? But it hasn't an arhat been liberated from all suffering? So how can they have a suffering thought, or how can they have suffering? That is my question that I have for you. So, so let, let's let's look here, right? So just based on this quotation. Okay, we're doing some textual analysis. Okay, 
just based on this quotation here, right, then it seems that there would be uh, some suffering occurring in an arhat's mind stream, right? If, if there's no suffering in, in uh, an arhat's mind stream, then Lama Sankaba would not have to have, you know, written this, this uh, uh, little phrase here in between the M dashes, right? So we see at least from, from this quotation from Lama Chenmo, that's some evidence that supports that there is suffering in Arhat's mind stream. Okay? So, Anya, I see your hand is raised. So, basically, kind of reiterating what you're saying, I was imagining what you're talking about as um, they can experience suffering, but they don't suffer the suffering. You know, like they could stub their toe, but because they are an enlightened being, they're not going to keep thinking about it and ruminating on it or just they'll accept it, but it, they won't suffer from it in the way that a non-enlightened person would be. Okay, but they're still suffering. They're not suffering like uh, someone who hasn't attained our hardship is suffering, but they still suffer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Jorge it, and Melody, I see your hand is raised. Um, I, um, I think because Arhat in previous lives, um, they did, they caught, they created some bad karma. So in this life, uh, the seed written and then they suffer, but they, they are enlightened, enlightened and they they realize emptiness so they don't grasp and they they don't have attachment so um those um karma won't um throw them in the next life okay so um first of all uh hello i don't think you've come before to a session that i've taught right no so, um, so, so welcome Nice to meet you. Nice and to meet you too. I, I, I like everything that you said. Actually, everything you said is true. Everything you said is true. But the question then is, let's keep it real simple. Then does the arhat suffer? Yes, maybe for but, a second, but they they know they know emptiness and okay. So yeah, we'll keep it simple. So yes, the arhat suffers. So then, do we also say that the arhat has abandoned suffering? Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe they have like physical pain, but they don't get attached to those sufferings. Like, because some of the bad karma will turn into like physical pain. For example, if you kill a lot of lives and you kill a lot of kind of like, un, like um maybe they 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 know the sufferings but they don't get attached to it but they okay. do suffer <laughs> okay yes they, they suffer that's good but have they abandoned suffering you know in the four noble truths we're going to come to this later right we have the truth truth of suffering truth of the cause of suffering truth of cessation of suffering right mm -hmm. so they have the truth of cessation of suffering cessation of suffering means finished over Right. Okay. This is this is a hard question. You've been very brave. That's good. Thank you. But this this is the question, right? So all of you, right? It, it should be. What's going on? What is this guy? Yeah. What's happening? Right. That's good. Okay. This is this is class number one of this module. We're not going to get it all in this class. Okay. But you should all feel this. Oh, there's something. There's something strange going on. There's something fishy. Okay, that, that's good. I want, I want that feeling more than to have it resolved and be like, oh, I understood everything. I like that discomfort. Okay, that means there's, there's room for growth. When that mm, kind of feeling gets resolved, then, you know, that's how the conviction comes, right? Because there's a doubt, then the doubt gets resolved and then it's good. Okay, but maybe Eve, now I see her hand. Maybe she's going to just totally dispel all of our doubts. 
Eve, what do you want to say? Well, uh, first, I guess I'd have to say I won't be dissolving all of our doubts. However, um, in the last module, we briefly brought up the idea of when all beings attain enlightenment and that there's a paradox in that. Um, and is, so in the question, question that you're asking now, is there a little bit of a paradox? Well, uh, you, you tell me what the paradox could be. What's so, the potential paradox? And then I'll tell you if it's an actual paradox. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so the, I, I, to me, I think the idea of compassion involves some awareness of suffering. But if nobody's suffering anymore, what happens to compassion? So it's kind of um, maybe when we all reach enlightenment, we'll know the answer to this. But right now, it seems like a paradox. Well, what 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 is the the, the paradox? You know, the, the two things in opposition, right? Okay, if the paradox is being beyond suffering and still yes. being able to understand suffering. Okay, so the 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 arhat, on the one hand, we're we're saying based on this quotation, they're suffering, but on the other hand, they understand suffering. And they're beyond they're, they're they're beyond suffering, but they can still have some comprehension of it from something that we're wondering what that is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. So this is something um, you know, and I want you uh, then in the required readings, right? Actually, one thing that's really nice about um, well. I think it's nice. I like this. In Pabonka Rinpoche's liberation, palm your hand, especially in this section, so many stories, so many stories from, you know, the, the sutras, right? And some of you will know these stories from, from our previous, um, you know, teachings that you've received. But, you know, for example, the um, Angulimala, you know, you remember Angulimala? Yes, Angulimala. He, he's the one whose uh, teacher told him to attain uh, liberation, right? The teacher was jealous of his own student because the, the student was about to surpass the teacher. So he said, oh, to attain liberation, uh, you need to kill uh, a thousand people, okay? So Angulimala, uh, Mala, right? You know, right? Mala, uh, Angu, or, you know, some... some uh, you know, badly pronounced, but that's finger. So he would actually then, you know, he would kill someone, cut off the finger, and then he made a mala of it. You didn't hear? Okay. Then uh, the story goes, then the, the Buddha is in that area. And, uh, you know, Angulimala had, had killed 999. And as the story goes, Buddha was going to be 1,000, right? So Angulimala is then, you know, going after the Buddha and, you know, kind of chasing after him, running. And uh, the Buddha is just walking, you know, very slow. And uh, then as fast as uh, Angulimala sort of ran after him, could never catch up. And so at one point, Angulimala said, oh, hey, slow down. And the Buddha, through his skillful means, said, why don't you slow down? <laughs> Something like this, right? So then, based on that teaching, you know, Angulima had a, a small kind of realization that, oh, you know, oh, slowing down, what does that mean? Oh, slowing down. And then, you know, uh, that means to, you know, subdue the mind and subdue the afflictions. And he had, a, you know, some level of realization, actually attained our hotship in that life. Okay. So then after he attained our hatship, okay, he then would go into town, right? And everyone was afraid of him because he had been the one who murdered so many. And um, at first they kind of stayed back. They didn't get close. But after they, um, they kind of got confidence that, oh, he wasn't going to kill them. But then, you know, some people got mad and they then sort of beat him to a pulp right, kind of getting revenge. 
So, <laughs> when uh, uh, Angun Mala was then, you know, he's been beaten up. He's suffering. He's an arhat, right? I mean, then we can, you know, <laughs> kind of uh, mince words or, you know, have some kind of, oh, you know, he's not really suffering or he's beaten up, but he's not attached to you know, this and that. But the fact of the matter is he's suffering, right? He's suffering. He's feeling pain. There's other stories from the, uh, you know, Pali Canon. Uh, even in the Pali Canon, you know, it says that the, the, the Buddha, uh, you know, he would say, oh, I, I have a headache. And, you know, the, the famous story of, uh, I mean, there's a lot of debate on this, of course, but uh, that the Buddha died from having eaten poisoned food, right? So anyway, why I'm bringing all this up, when we read these stories, and then, of course, also uh, Mogalayana, remember, who uh, criticized his mother, and then he also was beaten up, and that's how he died, right? He was beaten uh, by, by some people. We'll get into the story later. But it does seem that, uh, you know, they are suffering. They were suffering. But it also seems that we want to say that they've abandoned suffering because they're an arhat. And of the four noble truths, you know, you abandon the first two and you adopt the second two, right? You abandon true suffering and true cause of suffering, but you, uh, you know, uh, then take up, right? You adopt the true suffer, uh, true cessation and uh, true uh, path. Anyway, that is good for session one, okay? Oh, then, okay, sorry, 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 sorry. That's, that's my first doubt. Another doubt about this, about this very same passage, okay? Then we say, oh, it is impossible for suffering to arise from virtuous karma. Right? We like that? Yes? Okay. So now, uh, Shanti, thank you for volunteering, um, putting your thumb up first. Then I wonder, right? <clears throat> so now, uh, the suffering of aging, okay? Now, you know, I, I have a few uh, gray hairs coming, okay? Suffering of aging. Then, uh, Got a few more wrinkles in my brow. Okay, suffering of aging. Now, um, I've had, uh, you know, very fortunate to be reborn as a human, right? So having been born as a human now, that is the effect of virtuous karma, right? Okay, now having been born a human, then, uh, you know, <laughs> if I don't, uh, die when I'm a baby, I'm, I'm bound to get old, right? Okay, so I'm bound to experience the suffering of, of aging. So that suffering of aging, now, isn't that the effect of the, uh, you know, virtuous karma of having uh, been born a human? Partly, yes. Actually, they talk about manifest suffering here, isn't it? Manifest suffering. Different. Can you not see? <laughs> actually, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm I'm very fortunate. I'm not complaining. I, you know, I have a good hairline. You see that? Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> so, isn't it good that you have reached this age and not died early? That, that is. But I'm, but I'm saying now, in particular, the suffering of aging, right? right? Suffering of aging. That is one of the sufferings, right? We talked about the, the eight types of suffering, right? We have the three types of suffering, six types of suffering, eight types of suffering. In the eight types of suffering, we have suffering of aging. That right? would be a completing karma, result of completing karma, what suffering you get from as part of aging. So, okay, now you're bringing in new new terminology that's that's okay we're going to get to that so you're saying that it's a different uh karma the 
the there's only one karma that then had me born as a human, but then all these other experiences I have is completing karma. Mostly, yes. <laughs> Mostly. <laughs> The basis is the first karma, and uh, the all the other experiences, most of them are completing karma. Okay, we have some other hands up. So, uh, Eve, I saw you first. Okay, so uh, being born as a human, we're still in one of the samsaric realms. Yes. And and um, so that would explain why we can be as fortunate as we are to have um, a virtuous, a, 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 a good rebirth. But within it still, I think what Shanti was saying is, um, you know, in the last uh, module we had throwing karma. Was that, what's the one that creates our rebirths? Yeah, throwing karma, projecting throwing karma, karma, yeah. But then there are all these other little karmas running around that will be uh, from a, uh, either in within this lifetime or in some previous unknown lifetime that would be negative actions that have to be uh, that come right become ripened in this existence. So I mean, it's still samsara. Yes. Yes. Okay. You know, no, again, what you what you've said is all is all true, but remember, I want the discomfort to be there first, right? So the discomfort is okay. Let's forget about my gray hair, and let's just talk about right all pervasive compounded suffering, right? So this human rebirth is still all pervasive compounded suffering, right? Because I still am in some in some sorrow. Yes. All pervasive means all six rounds of samsara is pervaded by that that last type of suffering right so the human rebirth of, of a samsaric being like myself that is all pervasive come out of suffering if so then is that not the result of virtue okay uh jorge and melody um i don't think it's a result of virtue uh, the virtue uh, makes you re rebirth as a human being, but maybe some non-virtue you did before uh, make you suffer from aging because aging is a aging doesn't have any intrinsic existence. Uh, you will feel you will suffer because uh, because your attachment or your ego or anything those sufferings come from ignorance and. Um, and from the previous maybe bad karma you created. So, so at the moment you, you feel you're aging, uh, you feel sad that's, that's from the bad karma. So um, it's not related to the good karma that you did. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Mary Ellen, I see your hand is also raised. Even the most virtuous karma that we create, the most virtuous thing that we can possibly do, we still, it's still contaminated because we haven't eliminated the root. So as long as we are able to, as long as we are able to create karma, we will suffer karma, good, bad, and the otherwise. That's, that's also true. That's also true. But then, you know, so still this question is, is there, right? uh the suffering of aging okay first i was talking about suffering of aging then later i switched to you know all pervasive combined of suffering but don't we want to say um you know either <laughs> either when i'm born as a human i'm gonna you know die in the womb or die when i'm very young right or if i if i don't then i'm going to get old and then when I get old, because I still have this type of, you know, the, what do we say? Uh, the, the uh, contaminated appropriated aggregates, this then, you know, in the, it, when it talks about the suffering of the contaminated appropriate aggregates, it's then I have the type of body that is able to get sick. I have the type of body that is able to, you know, have wrinkles on the forehead and whatever, 
right? So then is that not just part and parcel of being born as a human, right? Because even for example, you know, his holiness the Dalai Lama, you know, has 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 wrinkles and, and white hair and so forth, right? So is that just not then just part of what it is to be born as a human? And therefore, would it then not be some suffering that has come just from having been born as a human? And having been born as a human is the, you know, the result of virtue. So isn't there some suffering that comes from virtue? That's the discomfort I want you to feel. Okay? Let's go on. Okay. Eve has her hand up. Oh. Okay, Eve. So, does, Sorry. does yeah. suffering come from in ignorance or from the rebirth? So, I mean, isn't it the ignorance that's causing suffering? To be specific. Uh, okay, in, in, in general, and, and um, I don't want to get you off the hook of all of the discomfort, but, you know, there is the, the kind of root cause and then there's the proximate cause, right? Right. So any kind of suffering experience I have, okay, even, even let's say uh, getting sick, yes, there is the, the original ignorance that then uh, motivated a negative uh, karma that then had me, uh, you know, experience the sickness. The sickness also have to, had to have had the cooperative condition of the virus, right? So let's say when I, let, you know, 17,143 years ago, when I killed a, 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 a bug, right, out of anger, Okay, I had uh, you know one affliction of uh, ignorance, one affliction of anger, a a negative karmic imprint of killing. Okay, and then in this life, the proximate cause of the virus. All those ha had to kind of come together for me to experience the suffering of sickness. So it, it's you know the when we say the root is is um, ignorance. That ha it is there, but there's other factors that come about. Okay. Jorge and Melody. Hello. So I guess my biggest problem is trying to understand the question. So from what you explained, it was, um, from what I understood is like, if you're sick, you take medication. The medication is good, but the medication tastes bad. It's not... that it tastes, but it's still good that you have medication. Is that what you mean by being human? <clears throat> no, no, no. Uh, though what you're saying, again, is true. Here, let, let me, let me uh, go back to the, uh, the, this. Okay. You see, when we say it is impossible for suffering to arise from virtuous karma, okay? I'm just taking this statement and then I'm, I'm then teasing out a potential doubt that the suffering of aging, okay, what causes the suffering of aging, right? I've been born as a human. Okay, so, so this is what we take as um, kind of axiomatic, right? Uh, we saw earlier, Nagarjuna said, from uh, virtue comes uh, happiness and all the higher rebirths. Okay, so my being reborn as a human, it came from virtue. Then we have this statement that, you know, no suffering can arise from virtue. All suffering arises from non-virtue. Then, uh, well, what about the suffering of aging as a human? Okay, so um, I'm assuming uh, you're Jorge and the person next to you is Melody. So Melody, you know, she had one way out of it was saying, okay, you know, your, your rebirth as a human, that was, uh, you know, from virtue, but 
the suffering of aging, <laughs> that's from other negative karma. So keeping, keeping those separate, right? Keeping those separate. But when I'm saying part and parcel of being human, it's like, you know, uh, part and parcel of being human is that, you know, for the most part, we have to eat food to survive, right? When I don't eat food, I have uh, suffering of hunger, right? So isn't it the case that, you know, having been born either, either, you know, animals or, uh, you know, humans, then they need to eat. So when they don't eat, they're going to experience some suffering, right? Or is that too, like when I feel hunger, that's more negative karma ripening as hunger? Or can we just say that, you know, since you're still in this samsara and you have all pervasive compounded suffering, even as a human, you're bound to experience something like this. Okay, that's, that's what I mean, like, um, what extent of suffering are we bound to experience having just been born as a human without having it be the result of other negative karmic, uh, you know, ripening factors? We see in the teachings, everyone who is born must die, right? So then the fact that I'm now <laughs> going to die, is that the ripening of other negative karma? In other parts, we see that, oh, it's just that my karmic kind of lifespan, it gets exhausted. And that's why I die, right? Okay. Shanti? Uh, Venerable, I think uh, that uh, unless you attain liberation or, um, or hardship or uh, eight level bodhisattva, in this life uh, okay. uh, so that's what is unless you do that you're still in samsara so you will experience but if you attain some kind of enlightenment or nirvana in this life then you don't have to get the sufferings of old age so it's not actually part of exactly part of human wait are you saying if i attain our hardship my hair will turn black again no, but you won't have that kind of suffering, right? Of aging. You won't have the mental suffering of aging. Okay. And if you be become a bodhisattva, Arya bodhisattva, or uh, eighth level Bhumi bodhisattva, then you have a mental body. So you just show the suffering and dying, but actually there's nothing going on inside. You're out of samsara altogether. Although you were born a human. Uh, okay. Uh, no, I, I hear, I hear what you're saying. Uh, I would want to debate a little bit, but actually uh, I'm looking at the time and we're only on the first one. We have, we have a few more, so let's continue and then we'll come back. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So second point. Right, is that karma shows great increase. So now here, uh, th th these uh, stanzas from the Dhammapada are quoted in both Lamrim Chenmo as well as Liberation in the Palm of Your Hand. Okay, so karma shows great increase. So here uh, it is said, do not think that the small sins I do will not return in my future lives, just as falling drops of water will fill a large container. The little sins, a churl, accumulates will completely overwhelm them and uh, do not think a small virtue will not return in my future lives just as falling drops of water will fill a large container the little virtues the steadfast accumulate will completely overwhelm them okay got that so here it's a little bit interesting uh in the uh, presentation of Lamrim Chemo, this is what it talks about, okay? It talks about, you know, we can't sort of um, neglect or uh, sort of overlook the effects of small negative actions because they add up to something big, 
and similarly with virtues, you know, they add up to something big, right? And this is, you know, karma shows great increase means uh, accumulating small over a long period of time, you get to something big, right? That's how it's presented in Ramun Chemo. Those of you who have that, you can, uh, by all means, please read both these sections. As we saw, the Lemon Chemo, the, uh, sorry, Liberation in the Palm of Your Hand, the required reading is not that long, you know, like l definitely less than 100 pages. So you can also read the corresponding section in Lemon Chemo. And you'll, you'll see, <laughs> don't just take my word for it. When it talks about karma shows great increase, this is what it means, right? Right. Then we see this in the um, liberation of the palm of your hand, right? Uh, when it's talking about confession, with the strongest form of confession, you purify the sin to its very root. Medium form lightens the sin, and at the very least, you prevent the sin from increasing in strength. But if you do not confess the sin at all, the sin doubles every day, and small sins become large. For example, killing a louse is a light sin. But if you do not expiate it, after 15 days, the sin is 16,384 times stronger. It has become about the same as killing a human being. Okay. Sorry, did you get that? So this concept here that our, our negative karma, it doubles in its potency every day, you know? And therefore, you know, two, four, eight, 1632, 64. Then after 15 days, it becomes what? 6,384, something like this, okay? This is talked about in uh, Liberation of the Palm of Your Hand, but not in Lamrim Chenmo, okay? But, in the teachings of the Vajrasattva practice, one of the benefits of the Vajrasattva practice is if you do uh, either 28 of the short mantra or 21 of the long mantra, you know, daily before you go to bed, then that at least purifies this uh, um, tendency for karma to double on a daily basis. Okay, so <clears throat> a little bit interesting. Now, I, I will just say. Um, when you read the the, the section, uh, the section in Liberation of the Palm of Your Hand, again, he's bringing up stories. And the stories that Prabhu Gurumisha is bringing up is, you know, um, calling an arhat uh, a monkey and then having been uh, reborn as a monkey for 500 lifetimes. Hmm? You've all heard that story? You've seen that story? So then, a doubt that came to my mind, you know, later we're going to, so th this is then is shown as, uh, you know, showing that karma shows great increase, right? From small actions come big results. Well, is that because this calling the, the arhat a monkey, it doubled, 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 and then you get reborn 500 life, uh, sorry, 500 times as a monkey. That's what it seems. Okay, I'm 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 previewing this for you when you read the that section. But later, right, we see the the various uh, factors that cause uh, karmic actions to be relatively uh, light or heavy, and in that we see strength in terms of the recipient of our action. And here, since we we're calling the person as an arhat, they're a karmic potent. A karmically potent field of merit. So, wouldn't it be the, the case that th this uh, story of the person calling the other one a monkey, because he's an arhat, wouldn't that be an example of the karmic potency of the recipient and not that of uh, karma shows great increase? Christine, I, I see your hand up. Hi. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting a little bit of like Catholic flashbacks here with the talk mm. of confession and purification. And so maybe you could just talk a little bit more about what that means when you say confession and purification. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So here, right. <laughs> you don't go into a booth. Okay. But it rather 
<clears throat> it is to you know reflect on your own actions. It's very um, yeah. Confession is not a great translation for for those with a, a kind of Catholic background. <clears throat> but here it's to recognize your previous actions that you've done, recognizing those unskillful ones as uh, having been harmful either to yourself and others, right? And then sort of making a uh, commitment to uh, not engage in such actions in the future, right? So, um, yeah, you understand? Usually, yeah, you would also uh, combine that with some kind of virtuous action to sort of make up for the, the non-virtue that you've done in the past. So you just come up with that yourself. You just decide what the virtuous action would be. Uh, yeah. I mean, later we'll get into it. There are uh -huh. six that are, you know, traditional, right? So like the, the Vajrasattva and the confession, um, uh, sorry, prostrations of the confession Buddhas, but actually any virtuous action can uh -huh. um, take the place, right? So, um, I mean, I was going to get into this later. Okay. Uh, but yeah, maybe now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, we'll kind of blend into our question and answer time. So I heard the story, right, of a, an American who was, um, who was in the Vietnam War. Okay. And he, one day, he was, you know, walking through the jungle and, uh, you know, he heard like they're on red alert. And, you know, I think maybe uh, the previous day there had been an ambush. So they're really kind of stressed. Anyway, they're walking through the jungle and then they hear a branch kind of crack in the, the, the jungle on the side. And so, you know, he and his mates right they they then you know with their m16s they just fire into the jungle right thinking they're about to be ambushed anyway afterwards they look and they see it was a, a woman and two children <clears throat> so anyway you can imagine this person so distraught and like, it's just, yeah, unbelievable for him. So when he gets back to the, the U S you know, he's having all sorts of uh, problems with this. He goes and sees a, um, I think it was a Zen priest actually, and explains the story. And the, the Zen priest says, okay, yeah, you didn't, you know, you didn't know. And now, you know, I know you feel uh, really bad about it. So this is what you do. You go to a, uh, a farmer and, uh, you know, one that, that sells um, uh, mutton, okay? You buy uh, three sheep that are about to be slaughtered, okay? You take them back to your home and you take care of those sheep and let them live out their life. Nice, huh? So, and then that, that, that does it. You know, you killed, you killed these uh, three humans unintentionally. We'll get into the, the different factors that uh, cause, uh, you know, karmic action to be complete or not. But you, you kill three, then three, you're going to save three. I mean, three sending beings, you're going to save. You're going to allow them to live out their natural life. So, I think that's very nice, you know, for, for me, I like that. <laughs> um, in, in some ways, I like that more than doing 100,000 prostrations. Anyway, but you, you hear these, the, the, the six, actually, this <laughs> list of the six is there in the, the, the module um, bullet points. That's one of the things we have to talk about. That's there, but actually, it's, it's a lot more um, open-ended than that. Okay, thank you. So, you know, really, and this is actually one of the, the meditations we're going to do, uh, you know, recalling the state of the mind. 
but um you know what we do every day before we go to bed it's just kind of skillful to replay um the events of the day and then those situations where we might have been unskillful we we got angry we you know said that thing we didn't want to say or whatever it is we should think about it and um you know oh how how did that happen but not in the sense that oh i'm such a bad person but rather you know to to learn about it you know just like um i just was the, the super bowl a couple of days ago right so just like you know the the the, the coaches right in in the the football match or whatever kind of sporting they they review the video afterwards and they you know make an assessment and they they learn from all that they say oh here you know you see our defense should have played like this or whatever it is right so we can learn but it's not about oh i'm such a bad person you know getting the guilt but it's purely from a uh, perspective of kind of learning from our mistakes so we we improve we don't engage in that kind of behavior again in the future okay so anyway let's get back to the the slides so i think that's a little bit uh you know that stuck out uh to me seeing these different presentations in the different uh, great texts and this this one about the karma doubling um i have not yet found uh the kind of source in indian texts uh, nonetheless uh it's there Okay, next point. One does not meet with something if one has not created the karma for it to happen. That's the third point. Here in Lama Channel, Lama Sankapa says, if you have not accumulated the karma that is the cause for an experience of happiness or suffering, you will in no way experience the happiness. Ah, two typos of, of it should be or. Uh, happiness or suffering that is its effect. Those who enjoy the fruits of the innumerable collection amassed by the teacher need not have accumulated all of the causes of these effects, but they do need to accumulate a portion. Okay. All right. So here, <laughs> Lama Sankaba packing a lot in there. <clears throat> I think that's the whole, all he says on this um, point. So here, uh, you know, the, the point is this, this first part, uh, right? One does not meet with, a, uh, with something if one has not created the karma for it to happen, okay? So that's just another way of saying, right? I think there's two, two negatives in there, right? So here we can just say, you know, everything that we experience, we have created the karma for. Okay? The flip side of that, uh, one does not meet with something one has not created the karma for. Okay? So, on a practical level, uh, this is very good to keep in mind. Um, it helps us, actually, to meditate on patience and not get angry. Because mm, when we have someone harm us, we tend to forget uh, our own uh, kind of um, role karmically and how this is all played out. Um, so, yeah, one does not meet with something if one has not created the karma for it to happen. But then this next point here, I'll, pr I'll bring it on the screen again. Oops. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, yeah. Those who enjoy the fruits of the innumerable collection amassed by the teacher need not have accumulated all of the causes of these effects, but they do need to accumulate a portion. So what on earth does that mean? Okay. So th this, I think, Lama Sankaba talks about this in another part of Lemon Chemo, but this is talking specifically about being reborn in uh, the Sukhavati Pure Land, okay, the Pure Land of the Buddha, okay? 
because you normally to be reborn in a pure land where there is no suffering, right? One will have had to, um, uh, you know, most of the pure lands of, of, of the Buddhas are only able to be born there if you're an Arya Bodhisattva, right? But for example, the Sukhavati pure land, the pure land of Amitabha Buddha, um, the Buddha then, or the, the, the teacher, right, made sp special prayers that um, ordinary beings like ourselves could be reborn there without having, you know, been uh, on the Arya paths. But here, when it says, so I'll bring this up again, right, they do need to accumulate a portion, right? That means, you know, for the rebirth in Amitabha Buddha Pure Land, then one needs to have faith in Amitabha, uh, make uh, kind of supplications and dedication to be reborn there, and then also have some semblance of, you know, meditating on, on uh, Bodhicitta. Uh, right? So your motivation to be reborn in that Pure Land is, uh, you know, uh, a pure one, so you can make progress more quickly along the path to enlightenment. So, right? See, accumulated all the uh, the causes of these effects, you know, to to truly <laughs> accumulate all the causes to be reborn in the pure land, you'll need to be, you know, uh, either a Buddha or at least an Arya Bodhisattva. Uh, but because of the um, the pure prayers of Amitabha Buddha while he still was on the path, then that makes ordinary beings like ourselves, you know, able to enjoy the fruits of uh, the innumerable collection amassed by the teacher. But uh, we still need to accumulate a portion. You understand? That makes sense? Okay, good. Then the last one. <laughs> Oops. Hello. Okay. Uh, karma once created will not disappear of its own accord. So here's a uh, statement from the Buddha in the Vinaya Vastu. Uh, Even in 100 eons, karma does not perish. When the circumstances and the time arrive, beings surely feel its effects. So, yeah, basically, that means, you know. Uh, yeah, once we have accumulated the uh, karmic seeds, even, uh, you know, if it doesn't ripen in this life or the next life, as long as we haven't purified uh, the negative karma, uh, eventually, when the circumstances and time arrive, then we will experience the effects. So let's take a step back and just look at the big picture of all this, right? So these four principles, okay, just kind of give the, the general rough view of how karma works. But the goal of all this is so that we become more precise, more careful in our behavior, right? So seeing that, uh, you know, from non-virtue comes suffering, seeing that even from many small non-virtues, right, they build up. And they can lead to big effects. Seeing that, you know, everything we experience is due to our karma, both good and bad. Seeing that, okay, even if, you know, we do something small today, we might not experience, but eventually we are going to experience it. Then this all should be, uh, you know, impetus for us to be very, very, very precise in our actions. Okay. So, yeah, that's the point. All right, so that is the, um, that is what I wanted to cover today. So now we have a few more minutes, and if you have uh, questions, we can talk about it. Um, I, I have a question. So did these teachings come are they translated from the buddha or are they interpretations of it like like all these are other authors so like these um 
I guess the guides and, and the, the Dharma, where did it come from? Hmm. Well, uh, certainly, okay, so we had this, you know, the, the, this last one about from the Vinaya. Okay, the Vinaya, that's actually uh, the word of the Buddha. Then even the, the first one we said at the beginning of the, the teaching, right? Do not commit a single uh, negative action, accumulate a host of, uh, you know, perfect pure actions to thoroughly subdue one's own mind as the teaching of Buddha, right? That's also, uh, you know, from the, the Dhammapada, uh, you know, uh, teaching of, of Buddha. So uh, this kind of presentation of... Um, of the, these four outlines, of course, the Lamram outlines came as a, uh, how do you say, the structure of the Lamram genre, you know, came from the, the um, further kind of subsequent masters, right? But uh, these general principles, I'm pretty sure you can find in, um, in the, the, the Buddha's own words, in the sutras, right? Because you'll see in the, um, the kind of advice for practicing this, it is to, you know, read the sutras, read the, the, um, uh, the sutra of the wise and the foolish, read the text on the monastic discipline, where a lot of these stories then are, uh, you know, illustrating the points that are being made there. Okay, uh, anyone else? No. Available, I have one question. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, um, how does immovable karma, immutable karma, is it virtuous or non-virtuous or is it neutral? In that classification, where does it come? And where does meritorious and non-meritorious? I'm talking about more about uh, how uh, they classify it, especially the labels. Okay, what do you think? Okay, so first of all, let me ask you then, what is immutable karma? Well, uh, I, I would say immutable karma is karma created in the form and formless realms, whether it's from a virtuous mind or non-virtuous mind, and the results are felt only in form and formless realms. That's what I understood. That's why I'm asking you, Venerable. I don't know exactly. Uh, well, okay. So... Uh, all right, this is getting a little bit into the Buddhist cosmology, but some of you who haven't, uh, you know, studied this before, we have the three realms, realms in the Buddhist cosmology, the, the desire realm, form realm, and formless realm, okay? And now in the, uh, we're in the desire realm, if you haven't noticed, <laughs> right? So all the, the, the three lower realms and, uh, you know, humans, or in the, the desire realm, then there's also uh, some desire realm, uh, you know, um, asuras and suras, gods and demigods. Then there's the form realm and the formless realm, which are types of devas, okay, types of small g gods. So in order to be reborn there, then one needs to uh, develop these form and formless concentrations, okay? Basically, after attaining shine uh, or shamata, then one is able to uh, access higher, more subtle levels of concentration. In doing that, one then develops or, or accumulates this so-called immutable karma. Immutable karma means, you know, can't change, right? Be immutable. Means, it can only be then experienced at uh, those levels. So if you're meditating on, say, the third form concentration, the third concentration of the form realm, you develop throwing karma that then has you reborn in only that third realm, 
right? You can't then, um, uh, you know, immutable means not then experienced in another realm other than the third level of the form realm. Okay. So in that, from that perspective, okay, definitely has to be virtuous because it's the throne karma that then has you reborn in the upper realms of existence. Okay. Now, even more so, Shanti, this is for you, okay? In the form realm and the formless realm, there is no suffering of suffering. There's no suffering of suffering. After the, from the fourth concentration of the form realm on, and that means all of the other formless realm concentrations, there's no suffering of change. Okay, so um, not only is there no non-virtuous, uh, because not non-virtuous karma then, uh, you know, would, would ripen as suffering of change, right? We say the, the suffering, sorry, sorry, suffering of suffering. Suffering of change comes from contaminated virtue. Okay. Anyway, those of you, you haven't said that stuff before, it's okay. We might get into that later. It does touch on that later. But um, yeah, that's all I want to say about it right now. Eve. Yes, Venerable. Um, when when you are, were doing the presentation, each point had, was supported by um, something from a commentary or, or something like that. Um, and it went a little bit fast. Do we, will we be getting some of the um, information that you're presenting on the screens? It, it just, um, I, I'm not saying that I'm gonna study it extensively in advance, but when you're, when you're speaking, um, and then you ask a question about it, but it's off the screen. I, I think it would be helpful if I could have that material in front of me. Is that a possibility? Anything is possible. Thank you. But here's the other thing. And, and here's my, um, I'm, I'm, I'm lifting up the curtain so you can see a bit. These quotations, they're either from Lamrim Chenmo I mean, they're either quoted in Lamrim Chenmo or they're quoted in Liberation in the Palm of Your Hand. And some of them are quoted in both places. So when you read the Liberation of the Palm of Your Hand, um, which is in your required reading, then you'll, you'll see many of those. Um, what I was doing, uh, you know, in my, in my kind of un you know, unprofessional way that I, I think I like to teach is so-called priming the pump, right? So I'm, 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 I'm laying out this kind of little bit rugged terrain, okay? A little bit rugged terrain. I'm, I'm showing you a rough guide. Then you're going to jump into the required reading and you're going to say, oh yeah, he was talking about this. Oh yeah, okay. And then you'll, you'll kind of unlock some of those doubts that I was I was coming uh, with, and uh, you know, hopefully, then resolve some of those doubts that we felt uncomfortable with. But at the very least, <laughs> you know, read the required reading. And as I mentioned, you can also read the Lamrim channel. It'd be you know very good to do <clears throat> if you have access to that text. If not, then you know, liberation of your hand is 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 very good. But uh, maybe to, to really directly answer your question, yes, we can make these available to you. Thank you. Okay. All right. So it is uh, now uh, about that time. So how are we feeling? Good. First session. Um, great. So we have, uh, some things to cover and we're going to go through that in the uh, coming weeks and yeah, in about a month. 
I hope to to see many of you uh, in person. And uh, yeah, I have a few other ideas I'm going to discuss with Mary Ellen, um, just to you know prime that for you. So let's just uh, do a, a brief dedication. Let me go back to. Oops. Yeah. Okay. Prayer for the conclusion of the teaching. Okay, so this is the dedicating the merit from having listened to this teaching. May whatever virtue I've collected benefit the teaching and all transmigratory beings, and may it especially cause the essence of perfect pure Lozon Drakpa's teaching to shine forever. Uh, and then why don't we also just dedicate really um, quickly for the long lives of the spiritual friends, the flourishing of the Holy Dharma, and then, uh, you know, for all of us and all the rest of the Dharma practitioners to uh, develop all the realizations, have no obstacles to our study and practice, and be able to quickly attain enlightenment so we can be of utmost benefit for all sinning beings. Okay, so thank you very much. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much, Venerable Namjong. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much. Ahui ho, as they say. Ahui ho. Ahui ho, yes. means till we meet again. It's like au revoir. <laughs> yeah, same, same. Okay. Hasta la vista. Hasta la vista. Yes. Ciao. Ciao. Okay.